Hey YouTube, it's ICU, and today I'm going to compare and test Apple's all-new 2014 MacBook Air against the laptop's predecessor, the corresponding mid-2013 model, which was when Apple last refreshed the company's Air series. Now, to start off, I'll perform a boot test and then get into the specs of both of these laptops before moving on to cover the various tests I have planned. Keep in mind, the early 2014 model is on the right. Unsurprisingly, the latest Air is the first to boot into OS X, followed almost immediately by its predecessor. Now, navigating to about this Mac, followed by more info, reveals that the early 2014 model is powered by a new 1.4 GHz core i5 dual core CPU and 4 GB of RAM. It also features Intel's HD Graphics 5000 chip and 128 GB of PCIe based flash storage. So, in theory, utilizing Apple's latest and allegedly improved flash storage system, the new model should offer improvements in both data read and write speeds. Panning over to the mid-2013 model, you'll see that it's powered by the exact same amount of RAM as the newest version, 4GB, and by an Intel Core i5 dual-core CPU that's 1.3GHz. It also sports the same HD Graphics 5000 chip. However, because the absolute base model 13-inch mid-2013 MacBook Air was sold out, I went with the 256GB variant. But because transfer speeds aren't improved from one capacity tier to the next, that shouldn't affect the test, seeing as the 2014 model I have on hand is equipped with 128GB of storage. Also, by invoking Launchpad, you'll notice that the exact same applications are installed on both computers. That's because they're each brand new out of the box with fresh installations of Mavericks. They even have the same number of stock apps with pending updates. Don't worry though, the mandatory OS X updates have already been applied. And now using a popular Mac App Store app called Blackmagic Disk Speed Test, I'm going to measure the read and write speeds of both computers. Remember, because the 2014 model uses a PCIe connection, in theory, it's supposed to be faster, like Apple has proved with the company's latest Mac Pro. Now, initiating the test at the same time, you'll notice that the 2013 model flies ahead of its successor in write speeds, and a closer look confirms that, with the write speed hovering around approximately 540 to 550 megabytes per second, and a read of roughly 687. Respectively, the new 2014 model maxes out at about 322 megabytes per second on write and 715 megabytes per second on read. So, interestingly, even with the improved storage system and considering the fact that these laptops feature identical content as they were set up side by side, the 2013 model is capable of writing data at over 200 megabytes per second faster, which is a significant difference. However, the new Air can read data slightly faster by about 28 megabytes per second. So in this case, the 2013 model clearly wins. However, seeing as Apple slashed the prices of all of their new MacBook Airs by $100, it's likely that this could be the primary compromise the company was forced to make to maintain their profit margins. Moving on back to Launchpad, let's open NovaBench, which is a simple benchmark test that takes into account various factors and aspects of a machine to provide a cumulative computing score. Starting the test simultaneously, you'll notice they complete at exactly the same time, and in this case, the 2014 Air wins for overall computing power. However, not by much. Looking at the 2013, we have a score of 573 compared to 595 on the 2014 Air, with noticeable improvements in the CPU category. However, this tool states that the write speeds of the 2013 are 191 megabytes per second compared to 224 on the 2014, which is pretty interesting and that's why I prefer and use Blackmagic as it's usually able to harness more of a computer's storage capabilities. Next, let's compare something that's often overlooked in computing comparisons, data speeds. So launching and starting speedtest.net to measure the download and upload speeds of these laptops on the same network, each built with 802.11 AC Wi-Fi, you'll find that the 2014 model is faster, coming in at 
69.91 megabits per second down and 11.92 megabits per second up versus 52.29 megabits per second down and 11.28 megabits per second up on the 2013. Again, over the same network that's supposed to provide a max download of 100 megabits per second and a max upload of 10 megabits per second. So while these type of tests aren't always reliable in the same location and over the same network, the new 2014 MacBook Air bests its predecessor, which again uses the same Wi-Fi tech. And numerous reruns of this test have reaffirmed that. And now for the final test, let's turn off both computers. With the 2014 Air fully shutting down leagues ahead of its predecessor, the real question is whether this upgrade is worth it over the mid-2013 model. From a realistic standpoint, the answer is a clear no. However, if you own either an older Air or you're just looking to get into the lineup, this is a great time to do so, especially with the $100 price cuts across the board. Also, if you're interested in my detailed unboxing of the new MacBook Air, I'll have a link to below and I highly recommend watching it if you're thinking about purchasing a new Air. And if you like this video and you want a chance to enter to win a new PS4, just be sure to rate it up and leave a relevant comment down below in the comment section and then visit my video on free app life to gain entries. And if you own an iOS device and you're interested in earning paid apps from Apple's App Store for free legally while simultaneously supporting the developers of said applications, just be sure to visit freeapplife.com or bit.ly forward slash get free app life inside of mobile Safari. Once downloaded, install sponsored apps for points and then redeem said points for various prizes, again, such as paid apps, gift cards, and electronic devices. And finally, to be updated more often, such as when I create new videos on various things like MacBooks and jailbreaking, just be sure to like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.